Hello there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. Uh, predominantly they cover A-level chemistry, but there's also some B-Tech applied science in there as well. So my aim is to upload regular video. Um, initially, they are going to be full lesson content. And the closer we get towards the end of the year, we're going to start looking at putting together some short, snappy revision type videos. So at the moment, we're looking at full videos where they will be quite interactive. You'll have questions to do and close at the time. We'll look at some revision videos. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on those videos. And let me know if there's any content you think's missing or anything that you'd like or any questions you've got. So hope you enjoy. So this is an AQA A-level chemistry video. It's a second lesson in a series of three. It's a second year topic, which is electrode potentials. And this lesson will focus on what the standard hydrogen electrode is. So how do we measure standard electrode potentials and what is the standard hydrogen electrode? Lesson one, we've already looked at cell representation and the idea of what electrodes actually are. In lesson three, we'll be moving on to look at using these electrode potentials to predict reactions and oxidizing re reduction type reactions. So always start with the specification. OK, I've never, ever met an A or A star candidate that doesn't revise from the specification. It's so important that you do that because at the end of the day, you've got to make sure you know what you're supposed to know. OK, and as my last video, uh, uh, you must have knowledge of the redox topic from first year. If you don't have knowledge of redox from first year, this is a really difficult topic. OK, it once you get those skills and you know, this, this becomes quite a straightforward, logical topic. It does divide a lot of students because some really like it and find it straightforward. In other words, the people have cracked the code. Some people really despise it because it's not the kind of thing you can kind of make up or guess. OK, so we're going to focus on this bit in the middle. Then we're going to look at standard electrode potentials. So this kind of bit in the middle here. And we're going to look at what the standard hydrogen electrode is. I'm using a white so you can't see that on there. But this middle, this kind of bit here and this bit here. We've already looked at cell representation. So I will do a little bit of covering of that today. We will kind of review that. So conventional cell representation. And we have looked at the half cell equations last time round. So let's start by looking at how we measure the standard electrode potential of something then. So the term standard means that we are comparing it to something. We have a standard that things are being compared to it. OK, now the, the electrode that we compare things to, our standard electrode is the standard hydrogen electrode, often abbreviated to SHE, standard hydrogen electrode. And this is our hydrogen electrode here. And if we were to do the cell representation or the half cell representation anyway, we've got platinum electrode, phase boundary, H2 gas. Remember, the reduced form is on the left and the most oxidized form will be closest to the salt bridge. From lesson one. So that's our standard hydrogen half cell. So in order to measure the standard electrode potential, we connect the half cell that we're trying to measure. We connect it to the standard hydrogen electrode. And the standard hydrogen electrode is always going to be on the left when we're measuring this. So the standard hydrogen electrode is on the left. We will add our half cell that we're trying to measure. And we'll look at some examples in a, in a bit. But they're always compared to this. OK, now the values can come out as either positive or negative here. And when you see an electrochemical series, you'll see that there are some positive values and some negative values. Now, what does that mean? Now, if you've got a negative value, that means that the half cell that you've been that you are attaching to the hydrogen is more easily oxidized than hydrogen is. In other words, it releases electrons more easily. That's kind of the easy logic here. If it's negative, it's releasing electrons. Electrons are negative. OK, so if you've got a negative value, it means you will release electrons or oxidized more easily than hydrogen. And if you've got a positive value, it means the opposite. It means you're less easily oxidized, which means you will gain the electrons. So you're less easily oxidized than hydrogen. So what we've got here, this is a cell that's set up to measure the standard 
electrode potential of copper. Now I'm going to point out a few things here. We've got hydrogen gas. Now it must be standard, okay? Now when we use the term standard, the pressure is 100 kilopascals. That's important. That's standard pressure. So the hydrogen gas must be 100 kilopascals. It must also be 298 kelvins. Both solutions must also be 298 kelvins. And also the concentration of the solutions must be one mole per decimeter cubed of ions. Be careful there. It must be of ions. So you, so you can't just say one mole of copper solution. It must be one mole per decimeter cubed of copper two plus ions. And likewise with the acid, common mistake people might make, you can't just say one mole per decimeter cubed of acid. It must be one mole per decimeter cubed of H plus. Okay. Just to kind of point out why, if you told me it was one mole of acid, well, if we used sulfuric acid, which is diprotic H2SO4, if you use sulfuric acid, you'd, ac you'd actually have two moles of H plus ions, which would not be standard. So standard conditions, 298 Kelvin, one mole per decimeter cubed of H plus, hydrogen gas at 100 kilopascals, hydrogen gas at 298 Kelvin, and the one that you're measuring, so we're getting the standard copper electrode here. The standard means that the copper is in one mole per decimeter cubed and the solution is also 298 Kelvin. I don't need to mention pressure here because there's no gases involved with the copper electrode. And just to remind us of what this would look like in terms of a cell, let's have the salt bridge, the two oxidized forms closest to the salt bridge, the hydrogen half cell must always be on the left, and then we've got copper, H2, and we need a platinum, platinum electrode on that hydrogen half cell. So that is the cell representation of how we would measure the standard electrode potential of copper. And the term standard, because we've got all those standard conditions. So in the exam, if they ask you what, it, what the conditions are, you can't just say standard, you have to list them, okay? So you must list the pressure, temperature, and the concentrations of the solutions, and take care with the concentrations of solutions. You can't just say one mole of solution. Be very clear on one mole of copper, two plus ions, one mole per decimeter cubed, and likewise one mole per decimeter cubed of H plus ions. You can't say one mole of acid or one mole of solution. I think I've made that clear. Okay, so here's our glimpse of a electrochemical series. So what we're looking at here is lots of different half cells and their standard potential. That little symbol above the E is telling us that it's the standard. That's the standard electrode potential. So just looking at this list then, I can see that magnesium loses electrons more easily than hydrogen because it has a more negative value. So does aluminium, so does zinc, so does iron. So these top four here, those metals on the right hand side will lose electrons more easily than hydrogen. And you can see that the standard is zero. That is the hydrogen. So the reason that's zero is because that is the standard. That's what things are compared to. And the substances below, they lose electrons less easily than hydrogen. Therefore, they have positive values, okay? So they have positive values, so they lose electrons less easily. We could flip that and say that they gain electrons more easily. They are positive. So the more positive you are, the better you are at gaining electrons. That makes sense. Electrons are negative, remember. So the more positive you are, the more likely you are to gain electrons. So the best substance at gaining electrons in that list is chlorine gas. The worst thing at gaining electrons in that list is magnesium ions. The best thing at losing electrons is magnesium metal. The worst thing at losing electrons is chloride ions. So you can see we're starting to piece things together here. Okay, and that's kind of where lesson three is going to take us, is using those in an awful lot of detail. Now they are standards. Remember they are standards. If you alter conditions, those values will change. Okay? Those values will change if you change the conditions.
Okay, some questions for you to have a go at then. So questions three and four may be pretty tricky, but pause the video and have a good research, have a look, see if you can answer these questions. And when you're ready, unpause the video and we'll go through them. Right then, so why is platinum used? Well, there's a couple of angles we can use here. So let's, let's look at what actually happens at the electrode. So we can say that it provides a surface for the transfer of electrons to take place. That's what's happening there at the surface of the electrode. So the platinum offers the surface for electron transfer. Also, platinum is used because it's a good conductor. It's also inert. It won't react and corrode. Number two. State the conditions of the stand, standard hydrogen electrode. So that is 298 Kelvin, hydrogen gas at 100 kilopascals, and the H plus ion concentration must be equal to one mole per decimeters cubed. Okay, so don't say one mole of acid. I've made that very clear, but it's a very common mistake that people make. What would happen to the value of the electrode potential if... 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed was used instead of one mole per decimeter cubed. And I'm giving you a hint here to say, look at Le Chatelier. So I think what we'll do is we'll look at the half equation. So the half equation for the standard hydrogen electrode is this. Now, if we were to decrease, so this is a decrease in concentration. So if we were to decrease the concentration from one to a half, what we're doing is we're decreasing the concentration of H plus. That would cause equilibrium to shift to the left. And in shifting to the left, it's releasing more electrons. It's oxidizing more easily, releasing electrons. So the E value would decrease. So it will become less than zero because at standard, it's zero. Remember, the hundred, hydrogen half cell is the standard. It's zero. But if you were to use less than one mole, the potential or the cell, the electrode potential decrease because equilibrium will be shifting to the left. OK, so the E would be less than zero. And number four, sketch a diagram and give the cell representation to show how the standard electrode potential of magnesium is measured. Right, well, I'm going to start a new page here. So, what we know is the left hand side must be our standard hydrogen electrode. So, I'm going to start with a beaker with one mole per decimeters cubed of H plus ions. So, I'm going to put H plus concentration is equal to one mole per decimeters cubed, and that's in there. We're then going to have a platinum electrode. I'm labeling it for you. You're welcome. And we must then bubble hydrogen gas in here. So this is hydrogen gas, and that must be at 100 kilopascals, which is also one atmosphere. And the temperature of both of these must be 298 Kelvin. Okay, and then what we do is we connect this to a voltmeter and our other, the one that we're measuring goes on the right and it's going to be a magnesium electrode. So this will be a magnesium electrode. And what will we have in here? We will have magnesium solution. So we'd have magnesium ions and that will be equal to one mole per decimeter cubed. And that would be in there. And again, this would need to be 298 Kelvins. And the last thing we need that I've almost missed off here is a salt bridge between the two, which could be simply a piece of filter paper soaked in potassium nitrate. Or if you fancy, it's like a, a glass bridge that's got a gel inside it but again it would just be a gel that contains ions usually potassium nitrate but what you don't want a note here you don't want your salt bridge to react with the solution so just be careful with that in terms of the name right so that would measure my reading on that voltmeter there would be equal to the standard potential for magnesium, the standard electrode potential for magnesium. 
Now, finally, I've been asked to give the cell representation for this. Well, we'd have the salt bridge in the middle. Remember, Katy Perry, raw, don't forget to raw. The most oxidized form is close to the salt bridge, and then in the right-hand side, that's magnesium. Then we have a phase boundary and the magnesium electrode, and on the left, H+, that's the most oxidized form, phase boundary, H2 gas, phase boundary, we need a platinum electrode. Done. Right, okay, hopefully that was useful. Okay, be careful with your conditions. Be prepared to talk about what happens to electrode potentials if the conditions aren't standard, and that's just your application of Le Chatelier. If equilibrium is shifting to the right, it's becoming more positive. If equilibrium is shifting to the left, it's becoming more negative. Enjoy. Hope you found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that button. Don't miss out on future videos. Let me know what you want for short, snappy revision videos. And good luck. Hope you get through lockdown.